Autobots transform. Jazz, organize a battle unit. We're going after them. Mirage! What is up, Transformers family? Welcome to another episode of George Reviews. I am the 80s Transformer fan, and you are watching my review of Generation 1 Transformers Mirage. And this is a very special review for me because this figure in front of me is the mail away version, and I bought it over 15 years ago. And this figure has never ever been transformed, but we're going to transform it today in this review and you saw the intro you probably saw me already transform it I'm gonna do that later then re-edit it and put it in the beginning obviously but at this point in the review this thing has never been transformed but anyway um I, like I said it's um the mail away version which is identical to the 1984 pre-rub version it, this one obviously has a rub sign on it we're gonna wait till it comes around again there is the rub sign right there and no stickers applied. I have the unused sticker sheet, and we're going to get all to that. But before we get to that, I want to tell you that Hasbro got the licensing for the, what we know as the Transformers figures. They they branded these guys Transformers, but they got them from a company called Takara in Japan, and they released these guys in what they call a Diaclone toy line. And in that brand, they were known as Car Robots. And Mirage was um, just a vehicle that was piloted by a little figure that would get in there and he would drive Mirage around. Let's see if I can get him in here. And a little guy like this would sit right in here and drive Mirage around. And just like, I, I didn't get into it in my how review, but unlike the other Diaclone figures, the pilot had a place to sit once they turned into a robot. Hound didn't have a place for the pilot to sit in robot mode, and neither does Mirage, which is uh, it's, it's kind of rare in this line. Normally, when they transform into the robot, the little guy would still have a place to sit. And this is just uh, one random little pilot I have. This is a, a pilot that he comes with. But I just wanted to take you guys back and let you know that before they became known as Transformers and Hasbro Toy Line, they had a previous existence and they had a, a different intention in the diaclone line this guy has a very 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 rare um recolor and it, it was done in um red and white how this one is done in blue and white and it came in a gift set with the figure that went on to become ultra magnus and a, a black version of side swipe and it is super rare and it's super hard to get I'll put a picture on the screen right here and it is highly highly sought after by collectors and myself but flashing forward back to 1984, Hasbro put all these figures under one banner. They became what we know and love today as Transformers, and he became Generation 1 Mirage. So let's get into the character bio that Hasbro created and intended for this figure for us all to imagine and play with. Mirage Allegiance is Autobot. His function is Spy. His motto who and what I am, I hide from the enemy. Mirage is not thrilled about being an Autobot freedom fighter. Prefers hunting turbo foxes on Cybertron with his high-priced friends. Effective fighter, more effective intelligence gatherer. Electro disruptor can cast illusions altering his physical placement and appearance for up to six minutes. Basically, he can turn invisible for six minutes. I never knew he had a, a time limit on that. Um, expert marksman. Armor piercing rocket dart hunting rifle. Unsure of the Autobot cause. Can't fully be trusted. Which, okay, his uh technical spec readout. His strength is a six. His intelligence is a nine. His speed is a seven. His endurance is a five. His rank is a seven. He's high ranked pretty high and he can't be trusted. His courage is a five. His firepower is a 6, and his skill level is a 10, which is pretty cool. He has some pretty solid numbers here on Mirage. And I remember as a kid, and like me and most of my friends, we thought of Mirage sort of like as the Autobot Snake Eyes. Like he was almost like the ninja type guy because of his stealth and his fighting ability. But they never really got into his character. They, they, they let us know for a hot minute he couldn't fully be trusted, but it was more um, of Cliff Jumper's suspicion of him. 
appropriately enough, that episode was called Traitor. And it was the only real spotlight episode Mirage ever had. And it actually came in season two of the Transformers G1 cartoon. And you think he would have got more of a spotlight in season one. And my theory on the reason why guys like Mirage, Sunstreaker, and Sideswipe really didn't get a lot of spotlight on a cartoon is because their toys did well. And a cartoon was a running toy commercial. And there was really no need from a marketing standpoint to market toys in the cartoon are already were doing well that's why we saw ratchet and a higher height so much in the cartoon it wasn't because those were really cool characters we think of them as really cool characters now because they were always on screen and they were always on screen because the toys were crap and they were trying to push that toy so anyway i'm gonna get mirage off the turntable and take a closer look all right now let's get hands on mirage take a look at that body and just so you know, Mirage's mold, the toy, is based on a Ligier JS11 Formula One race car ground effect version. Bring it a little bit closer. You can see Goodyear on the tire. I'm assuming they had the licensing back then. Big, thick rubber tires, which drew me to this toy, made me really desire this as a kid on both tires to the front chrome spoiler on the front fin whatever it's called same thing on this side I don't know if this is the racing company I never knew much about this um Centani's 26 or Saitani's 26 however you say it I'm not sure how to say that pronounce that and he's wearing a 26 with the elf right on the front that he's famous for you can see the engine in the back you can actually see some molded in wires coming off right there. You can also see the screws. The chrome spoiler, which actually articulates, I guess, to accommodate his feet in transformation, but moves back and forward. Uh, that's pretty much all the articulation in this mold. And he rolls on those rubber tires. And this is the first time I actually roll in this guy. Like I told you, I, this was the mail away version. I actually opened this uh, when a friend of mine came over my house years ago just to check it out. He was like in a little plastic baggie with his accessories. I'm going to come to those. But he did not come with the box. I later acquired the box, but he is pretty much mint. Except for his little sticker. I guess some little dust has got under the edges and it's like peeling a little bit on that sticker. But this thing is pristine. So, um, continue to talk about the toy and his accessories. And I put his accessories in this little bag right here. Let's take a look at what this mail away version came with. Alright, he came with his instruction booklet and the catalog. And I believe this yeah, the sticker sheet. His original sticker sheet is tucked away here. This is Mirage Originals sticker sheet. Have never used it, probably never will use it. That back here for right now. This back here, and I'll come right back to that in a second. And he's packed with the missiles. I think this may actually be the entire bag that he came in. That I keep the missiles wrapped in. If I can get the little tape off without destroying it. Yeah, I really think this is the bag that Mirage actually came in. I have not opened it since the day that I opened it. As you can tell. Come on. I'll ruin it. Yeah, this may actually be the bag that he came in. He was in the bag with all of this. This is why, like, I've never opened this book, but it's not in pristine condition because... Uh, it was all in the bag, like, smushed in here. So, like, it, the only reason why these things are in, aren't in better condition. And he came with, like, he came with a launcher. And his gun. Did I show you the missile? His missile's still on the tree. See where the tree was cut in half. And you can see the white plastic underneath. These are his missiles in pristine condition. And... His rifle 
armor piercing rifle. This is a pretty sweet like um, bio on Mirage. I guess it's written from the perspective of Cliff Jumper that he questions Cliff Jumper's motivation and why doesn't he fight more? And he he spe 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 he specifically talks about this rifle and how it's armor piercing. Why does and he wonders why Mirage doesn't take out more Decepticons because this is armor piercing. So um, apparently he can put holes in Megatron with this thing. So this is his rifle. And okay, move this stuff to the side. I'm gonna come back to his instruction booklet. It is the same artwork from the box. Open this thing up. What in it? Pretty gorgeous artwork. He has more paint on his face than the toy actually has. Here is the contents that I just showed you. The vehicle itself, and this is my first time ever opening this thing up. It shows you the transformation with some um, directional arrows. Um, I think that's a little bit rare. Yeah, spin the waist around, got the arms. Yeah, this is like a little bit more detailed than most of the other G1 Transformers, 84 Transformers instruction booklet. It shows you where to put the stickers and shows you how to rub up the rub sign. So that is his vintage catalog. And so that is his vintage instruction booklet and coming to his catalog. You know, I'm not going to use his catalog. I'm going to get to my checkoff list because we have to check Mirage off the list. This is the same catalog. This is the front. Shows all 20. It's number 25, but it's actually what 27 Decepticons because we got two extra ones over here that came as one. And the back, which is the back of the box art. But let's check Mirage off the list as being reviewed. Here is Mirage. He is number 12 on our countdown. Number 12. Later on, because I, I try to complete most of my guys, and the guys I don't have complete, I really thought I did. But he, I, I later acquired a box for this guy, just for display. This is a vintage Generation 1 box. It's kind of tattered. Uh, it has the bubble inside and the insert. This is what it looks like. The artwork from the booklet, or the booklet has the artwork from the box. Actually shows the wires hanging off of the engine in robot mode which is a pretty cool detailing shows his chrome finish looks pretty sweet the giant missile and apparently the, this missile thing is what actually turns him invisible side of the box try to get it in the back of Mirage's box his bio and his technical readout right here we already went over that robot points intact inside of the box bottom of the box vintage box and the top of the box all right just want to let you know that mirage has three um distinct releases he had the standard g1 release it came in rub and pre-rub versions um in the united states and around the world then he got the mail away version i'm, I'm pretty sure it was available in the United States and Canada and a few other countries that counts as like a second release of this figure then he had a, a very rare third release in the exact same color he came in the um, goodbye convoy gift set where he came with um, Optimus Prime and Red Alert it was supposed to be like a final farewell to Optimus Prime from the Transformers movie so those are his three uh, major releases the reason why I bring it up because um, he was actually packaged um, outside of the Diaclone line with Optimus Prime because in the Diaclone line he was designed if you see the back how it's flat right here he was designed to be ejected from Optimus Prime's trailer specifically and even though this is like um, not the Diaclone version but he still works pretty good fits right up against it and he was specifically designed to launch from Optimus Prime's trailer so here we go and there you go so if you didn't know now you know okay so now to actually get this guy transformed for the first time ever I feel like I should play some dramatic music and we're gonna slot the figure in half like this slot the arms out to the side bring the chest down to reveal the face move the tires back um, rotate the waist Separate the legs. 
and flip up his feet and here is generation one mirage transformed and revealed so let's take a look at mirage first we're going to start with his face and I always say he looks like the sphinx with these little things on the sides of his head I don't I think they just meant to be little fins but because of the scope it seems like it's all part of this little back part of the race car but I think it's just meant to be fins coming off the side of his face like sort of like a sun streaker he has yellow painted eyes he's one of the few 84 guys that actually has painted eyes the bottom of his mouth and chin is actually painted I'm looking at the toy not looking at the monitor sorry it's painted and again the, the fins on the side of the head is painted so he's a lot of paint sculpt and then he has these two little things on the side of his head that aren't really painted on the cartoon then he has like a little indentation here kind of makes you think of when um, the episode Trader that he was featured on in the season two where bombshells uh, implanted the cerebral shell in his forehead but he doesn't have this little thing in none of the cartoon artwork or any of the comic book artworks that are based on a cartoon so his head looks a lot different than the cartoon my first time actually seeing a G1 Mirage face toy in hand chromed out chest back here the 23 elf on his chest arms just hanging out uh, backing them up again it's, it's the car stood up basically but uh, I'm just getting a closer look so let's do his articulation and his mow his arm comes up this far then it hits the wheel and it has like a little bit of a spring in it as it moves feels funny on that ratchet the KO does not feel like this the KO is the only one I've really handled he has an elbow bend which is way beyond most transformers his hand 360s which is another leap and bound he has waist articulation because of the transformation and then his little feet can articulate like that and his legs are stuck together with the pin in the middle which I hate he could have been a much greater toy if they hadn't did that they could have easily made and on the pin down here they could have easily not made this connect and actually had leg articulation if they chose to if it was on their mind back then but they just weren't thinking that way they were just thinking transformation and that's it so that is a look at Mirage and from the back and like I said and I didn't get a chance to cover it in the home review I actually forgot that um these guys in the diaclone line were piloted by drivers and they used the um their cars are turned into robots as battle suits but he's one of the rare characters he has no place normally they have a compartment that they can sit in in um in robot mode once they transform but he does he actually does not have a place to sit i guess he could still hang out here and just be in there he actually sticks in there actually <laughs> but that's kind of weird but maybe that might be what they intended so back to hasbro version and i'm going to get him weaponized I'm going to add the missile to the launcher right now and it clips on the little tire wheel thing right there and it fits just fine and I'm going to get the um, rifle armor piercing rifle and get it in his hand and it fits off it's just fine See, that's a little loose but it's close enough for the review right it's good enough is it good enough no are you hating the fact that I'm using the KO pieces but would you know if I had never told you? It's a real question. But there is Mirage. He looks so sweet. Now my Mirage story from my childhood. Are you guys ready? I never had Mirage as a kid. I saw him in the store one time. And I hate seeing posts. When people make the posts on the social media sites. I'm on a few Facebook uh, G1 Transformer groups and people show pictures from their childhood from the stores just packed with Transformers. I never saw the stores packed with Transformers. As a kid, I saw it packed with He-Man, packed with Star Wars, but it was always pretty much picked over and scattered Transformers when I went. I saw Mirage in the store one time, just one time, and my mother refused to buy it for me. I don't know why. I think I had been a good boy, uh, uh, recently at that time and I saw at one time I grabbed it I ran to my mom I'm like yes Mirage is finally coming home I'm, I got Mirage finally I never knew a kid that had him uh, before or since as a child 
No one ever had Mirage, and I lusted after this toy because my dad would take me to the Grand Prix downtown Detroit, and we saw the Formula One cars, and I thought they were so unique and so different. You would hear them just jet by, and I really, really wanted this figure. The toys was the the toy looked so cool, so much like the real thing with the giant racing tires on it, and I just I. I really wanted this figure and my mother refused to buy it i don't know if she didn't have the funds which i doubt she was in some type of mood but i never got a g1 mirage as a child saw it one time in the store and never saw it again i was always at the stores always toy hunting even as a kid one time and i never got it and this was my hang up forever and i had to have a brand new one i, I could not get someone play with toy mirage as an adult and when I started looking for these at the time, mint sealed and box Mirage were going for like uh, 400 500 which is uh, cheap now. Now he's over a grand. And don't get me started on people grading these toys. And someone posted the mail away sealed in the package. He was like $130. And he had immediate payment required. And I remember I had to call my sister because I didn't have the funds in my PayPal to pay immediately. Like, it had to do that bank transfer back then. I called my sister. And I remember she answered the phone like, what do you want? I'm like, look, you need to get on eBay and buy this toy from me. Long story short, sister got on eBay, bought this toy, sent it to her house. I got it from her. And he was silt in a baggie when I got it. So, um, I, I, scratched, I scratched that itch and that need of having um, a brand new Mirage for myself. So, that is my long-winded uh, childhood G1 Mirage story. What is yours? All right, everybody, let's size them up and run them down. Here's Mirage next to Generation 1 Optimus Prime. Here's Mirage next to Generation 1 Sunstreaker. Here's Mirage next to Generation 1 Skywarp. Number 11, G1 Hound. Here he is with Cliff Jumper. Don't trust him, Cliff Jumper. Don't do it. Here he is next to his Siege Incarnation. And here he is next to the Invisible Translucent Clear KO. A hologram. <laughs> what other tricks can you do? Try this one, Spike. Now you see me. Now you don't. Hey, where'd Mirage go? Over here! Disappearing. That's the best disguise of all. Up. Okay, um, I kind of left out the fact that um, Mirage doesn't have an official reissue. Any reissue you see is a KO. He has not one official G1 reissue, even if it's Takara or Hasbro. There is no official Mirage because they apparently they lost the mold to this figure and didn't want to reverse engineer it. But we were also told at one point in time that we would never get Hound, that they had lost the mold to Hound. I don't know if they found it or reverse engineered it. But we eventually got a hound, and they said we would never get a Rishu hound. We got a Takara hound, and he's never been reached in the United States. Then also we were told Devastator mold was lost, and from what I understand, I read some material that Devastator, um, they purchased someone's mint seal Devastator and reverse engineered it off of that, and now we have Devastator at Walmart and, and Takara Rishus as well. So I don't know exactly what's going on with that. But Mirage and some more figures that I've yet to review have no official reissue. And if you didn't know, now you know. So that's pretty much all I got on Mirage. Uh, I really hope we get a masterpiece and get them soon. And when they do it, I really hope that they do it with rubber tires. I know they've gotten away from the rubber tires, even with MP44. They stopped using the rubber tires, but I really hope we get them. In rubber because these giant Formula One tires they just need to be rubber that's what made this guy so cool and stand out from all the other figures I mean they had rubber tires too but he had the gigantic rubber tires that he didn't pallet swap or share with any other transformer in fact he's never had a generation one pallet swap and I want to give you some buying tips for Mirage and though I've only ever bought one but I've hunted for him for a long time the main thing is the waist joint is easily broken you want to ask if you're buying online, is is it broken in repair? A lot of people go in and try to repair it because it's easily broken. So hopefully I won't have any experience with that. 
um, sticker wear to the figure. The stickers uh, age and peel over time. Then he has a lot of chrome. You see the chrome everywhere. Right here on the front, underneath the chest, on the legs, on the feet. You want to watch out for chrome wear, paint wear, and then cracking and drying, aging to these giant, gorgeous tires. You want to watch out for that. And the white parts uh, yellow pretty easily. And to make sure he's complete, he comes with three missiles, a launcher, and a rifle. So when you're buying uh, Mirage, watch out for those things. And that's pretty much all I got on this figure. What is your Mirage story? Please share it with me because you've just watched a review where every toy has a story. Transform!